Right, welcome back from the lunch break. We'll start off with the afternoon session with our legacy session seven, youth initiators and drives. So basically talking about, well, we'll have a video on uh, the Devastani family legacy. Hello everyone. My name is Alaya Devastani and I would like to personally welcome you to the sixth World Zoroastrian Youth Congress. I know many of you have traveled long distances to attend this Congress session. So I thank you for taking the time to continue your knowledge in the Zoroastrian culture and traditions. I was born and raised in the village of Sharifabad, Yazd, Iran in 1943. After finishing my MA in economics in Iran, I moved to Canada to further my education and began my career in real estate and real estate investments. In addition to real estate, I began to, a partnership with Eros International and owned many movie theaters across the United States and Canada and was largely involved with the Bollywood distribution in North America. After many years, my family and I have settled in Washington State and have continued to grow additional companies which include natural resource distribution such as biodiesel and sand and gravel, assisted care centers, rehabilitation clinics, and many different types of real estate investments. The road to success is not easy. I challenge each one of, each one of you and dare to be different. Challenge the norm. Take chances. Asking why. Each of you are unique and we must chart our own course and destiny for success. Continue to grow your education each day to better yourselves. In the Zoroastrian community, we say to have good works, good deeds, and good thoughts. Be honest, work hard, and you can achieve anything you can dream. I thank each of you again for attending this Congress, and I also want to give a big thank you to Auckland for letting us host our event this year, and to all the sponsors, coordinators, and other staff that have made this Congress a huge success. I wish all of you the very best in your futures. Uh, at the end, I want to say a few words in uh, Farsi. Durud man be hame shirkat konandegane iraniye huzur dar dar in kongre ve ba umide behtarin arzuha varay hamegi. Allah yar dabestani. Khuda negahdar. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, that's the. Uh... Family motto is basically life of giving is a life worth living uh, with the uh, Davistani family legacy. They've given a lot uh, from the roots of Iran and of course spread across uh, India and Canada uh, as well. To further elaborate on that, I would like to uh, get on our morning speakers back in, our popular speakers. We've got uh, Kairos and uh, Diana. Let's to start off the afternoon session and take the delegation ahead. Hi guys, I'm Kairaz. Uh, I joined uh, the Return to Roots the second program that was in March of this year. And uh, just last month I signed on as an organizer because I really, really believe in this program. So we'll tell you some more. I'll pass it on to Diana to get it started off. Okay, so uh, Return to Roots, or RTR, uh, it's a youth-led initiative that was kind of, the idea was developed at the Vancouver Youth Congress, and it came to fruition and was announced at the New York Congress in 2012. The first inaugural trip took place uh, coinciding with the Mumbai Congress in December 2013 uh, with the support of Parzor. It's co-founded by four youth from India, UK, and the US, 
and headed by Dr. Shinars Kama and Aban Marker Kabuchi. The main ideas or the main goals are to re reconnect Zoroastrian youth, often who have grown up outside of India, with their Indian and uh, Iranian origins. Um, and it helps foster a sense of community, provides insight into the Parsi's influence on India and the greater community, and it educates Roots Fellows on our religious practices, customs, and history. So our vision is to create a vibrant global Zoroastrian community by returning Zoroastrians to their roots, reconnecting Zoroastrians to our identity, and reviving our community. Okay, so I'll sort of talk about Return to Roots. There's a couple of people at this Congress, Kambaises, Rusam, I think there's a Naita somewhere around here, that actually came to the first trip. Uh, and then obviously it's just sort of progressed into bigger and better things as we move forward. Return to Roots, ideally, we're taking Zoroastrians from all over the world, okay, regardless of who's your, if you have one Zoroastrian parent or if you, they're both Zoroastrian parents, we take them back. We have certain trips for certain individuals as well. But we take Zoroastrians from all over the world, uh, just as somebody, Canada, USA, Pakistan, India, UK, um, I don't think we've got any people from Australia or Sydney yes, yet, as far as I can think, not yet. But we take them from anywhere, continents, countries, what have you. And we bring them back here, bring them back to India, uh, and to actually sort of just understand their identity, right? Um, a lot of people grew outside of India and obviously Iran. And uh, we just sort of catered this program to them. We show them anything and everything Zoroastrian. And uh, with regards to who it is, I'll talk more about eligibility and all that kind of stuff as we progress in this uh, presentation. But usually between the ages of 20 and 35 is who we're targeting. So returning, we, you guys see a lot. In 13 days, you guys are on the road almost every single day. Uh, it's like a congress, you won't really get a lot of sleep, but you get to see a lot. And um, you will go anywhere and everywhere, like we, like the first trip came out of the India Congress in 2013, branched into 2014, and it was mostly in the Bombay, in, 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 in Mumbai. Uh, when I did my trip, we started off in New Delhi, and then flew over to Mumbai. Quite an experience, flying with so many Zoroastrians in one plane. Uh, so, <laughs> it was a unique experience on its own. But you will go to Agiaris, you will go to uh, Punawala, so the biggest sponsor for this Congress, Punawala. You will see the actual, um, what's it called, Punawala set, uh, the set yeah, you'll see the horses, you'll see the facility, you'll see where the, the, med, the antibiotics, everything, you know, the, not anything that's made, the, inject, the vaccinations, you will see the facility, you'll see it all. Rutan Tata archives, you'll see um, eating, you won't stop. I gained 16.1 pounds before or after coming back, and I just lost it last month, all of it, pretty much. So you will eat six times a day, you will sleep in five-star hotels, and you'll only spend four or five hours in them before you go to the next one. Uh, as you can see, you will meet individuals, some really inspirational individuals. Uh, you know. Britannia, that famous restaurant. I got to meet this guy, he speaks eight languages. Uh, you will actually get to eat in Dharam Salas. You'll get to, there's this new restaurant, Soda Bottle Open Rawala restaurant. You get to eat there too. And they will, they will treat you like, uh, like royalty. They will really do a good job taking care of you. Finally, we will reconnect. And you're gonna, some of you will reconnect with individuals on this, someone you will connect for the first time. And it's, like this Congress, you know, it's a smaller one, it's intimate. That gets really intimate. And like you will meet people, you might get a little irritated from time to time with what people have to say, but then, you know, by the end of it, you guys are gonna miss each other because you guys really develop these tight bonds. And I'm sure there's Kambaises, Rustam, I know, and I know they probably keep in touch with individuals on a regular basis. I know I do. We have a WhatsApp group, and we wish each other happy birthday, stay in touch, things like that. So, so uh, the biggest takeaway for me, 
Um, biggest takeaway for me was uh, the friendships that I made and relationships that were formed. Um, I enjoyed the historical religious aspect of it as well and learning about a religion, but I think forming um, the lifelong lasting relationships was what's really important to me um, and kind of is going to help revive our community when we form those bonds that carry on through the generations. Yeah, I, just to add to what Diana said, I took away so much, that's why I signed up as an organizer. Honestly, um, I'm going back again in March and uh, you know, there's a lot in this trip that you see, and it, there's a lot to take in the first time. So, I'm obviously an organizer this time, but I'm taking this trip again just to sort of uh, see it again, and see it from a different perspective. Like, this trip, it's not like when your parents sort of take you to India, and they're like, okay, this is what I'll show you, this is it, this is all Zoroastrianism right here. They will show you everything. They'll show you orthodox, conservative beliefs uh, and, you know, communities. And then we'll show the very liberal, right? They'll just give you a broad perspective of everything. And, and, I, and I, I think it's really what we need to see, right? Especially our age group. It's just going to foster what we're going to be learning or what we're going to be practicing as we move on. Um, there's some testimonials. Uh, I know you guys can all read, so we'll let you do that. But um, clearly there's some people that are all well, the first delegates some things to say, some good things to say as well. My brother was uh, part of the first trip. I did the second, and uh, I'll do the third again. So, uh, participants afterwards from both trips mentioned uh, how much this trip has impacted them and gives them a sense of community and understanding. And that's really what we want from Return to Homes, is for people to understand the community, be proud of uh, Zoroastrian heritage, and uh, kind of be able to share that pride with people within our community and outside as well. need to know to qualify. Um, first things first, that's the approximate date right now. I'm hearing sort of 8 till the 23rd, but around this time, that, I mean, around those days is the next trip, so in about three months. Um, the trip is... So the trip, uh, 20 to 35 euros. That's what they like to, they, they're trying to target. Now, if you just, you're 19 or you're 30, 36, is that what it was? 19 to 36, just apply. All right? They can make exceptions, right? It's a selection process that they will go through. They'll get applications and then they're going to run through them. And if you specify specifically what you need, um, like, you know, your circumstance, they will, they will really consider it. Um, I'm going to be straight up with you with the, the cost. I know a lot of people, the first thing they're wondering is, how much is it going to cost? It's not a cheap trip, okay? But I'm going to tell you what you will get from it. Trip, 5,000 US dollars. Nobody can afford that here, unless you make it rain every day. You know what I'm saying? Like you, you, <laughs> nobody can afford that. I couldn't afford that. 5,000 US dollars is how much the trip costs per individual. Uh, they recommend, <laughs> they recommend uh, the organizers, they recommend 3000 Again, nobody can afford that. Most of you guys are in school. Most of you guys are either just starting off jobs or you're just looking for jobs. So, with, the, with regards to cost, I'm going to be straight up with you. If you can afford something, specify it in the application. I could, I, when I did my program earlier this year, I just came out of school. And I could barely afford anything. I said I can only put in a thousand US dollars. They made it happen. Right? They want you to be able to put something in. Now, if you really can't afford it, you have financial responsibilities, you don't even have savings, you're trying to pay student debt, emphasize that in your application. And let them know they will make considerations for you. They don't want cost to you know, affect your decision for this program, whether you're going to attend or not. They don't want that because this program is heavily subsidized. Punawala is one. I believe Tata. There's so many that are subsidizing this program. They're always looking for sponsors, but it's heavily, heavily subsidized. Now that being said, don't be like, oh, I got a 14-day vacation for free. Right? Don't do that. Like, please don't like, okay, they are gonna pay for everything and everything. I'm gonna go in five-star hotels, eat six times a day, and I'm just gonna make this a second vacation after this promise. Please be honest about it emphasize it, and then um, we'll look at it. 
Um, do you want to emphasize this? And with that, the, the cost is all inclusive. So once you get there, there's very little out of pocket cost to you. So your hotels are taken care of, you stay at Parsi establishments, you travel on Zubin's fleet bus throughout India, um, you eat at Parsi restaurants, and all of that is covered, uh, as well as the flight from your home country to India and back. Um, so it's all inclusive. But, so that's why the cost seems so high, but consider what you're getting out of it. Now, in terms of the specific eligibility, um, Kairos mentioned the age. Um, particip participants must also have one Zoroastrian parent. Um, if a uh, participant has a Zoroastrian father and has had their no joke done, then that's great. If a uh, participant has only a Zoroastrian mother, we also encourage people to apply. Um, but just noting that uh, some Agyaris or fire temples in India have certain restrictions, and so that needs to be taken into consideration. But we want to be as inclusive as possible and accept people uh, from all over and uh, every parent. And just to add to that, it's it's not us making those rules. It's where we go, those rules are established. We have to respect them. And that's pretty much it. Again, um, the first track, I, I can't remember if it was just Zoroastrian parents, both both mother and father, and then the second trip was either parent being Zoroastrian. Um, they, they will make those, they, they will try to accommodate anybody and everybody. Now, when these establishments sometimes say both parents have to be Zoroastrian or this or that, if there's one parent that, or one applicant or delegate that can't, doesn't qualify, it's not like they're going to be left behind. They will make alternative arrangements and programs for them. So they won't leave anybody out. All right, um, with regards to that, there's also going to be some other things where I need to, I just want to emphasize because we sort of had an issue with our second trip, but it was expected. Certain applicants, like, there's issues with visa with, between India and Pakistan. It's, it's an obvious one. Um, they, they get the delegates, we had four lovely girls from Pakistan that came to this trip. Um, but the government and the immigration department, they're very picky. So sometimes there's an individual, a guy named Daddy Mystery. He actually works side by side, uh, the immigration guys. And he, uh, there was one girl who had, she was born in America, but she had a mother from Pakistan. And they go that far back to sort of research who you are. And so she wasn't able to make it to the New Delhi trip, but because of this guy, he got into, she got into Mumbai. So the only thing I emphasize is, because there's these issues, like right now we're also working on an Iran, a trip to Iran. We are working on it, it's, it's happening. It's just issues right now is US uh, citizens getting into Iran. You know, there's some sort of political issue there, but they're working on it, okay? They're working on it, but again, what we encourage is people to apply early so that we don't deal with these issues last minute. They can make it happen, but you guys have to be in it and you have to do it quickly, right? That's the most important. Do it as fast as you can. Or emphasize that, listen, there might be a bit of a delay, not too sure. So if you guys show any interest at all, apply for it. And if you're like, listen, I may have to go to school or I may have to start work, emphasize that in your application. This is an online application that we're going to bring up to you in a second here. So we have major players that um, kind of help push forward this program. Um, we have donors, partners, sponsors, as Tyrus mentioned, it's heavily subsidized. And of course, the volunteers that actually go on the trips. Um, but most importantly, we have participants. And that's what we're here for, to encourage people to apply um, and participate in this trip. The next trip is in March. We have a few months until then. And um, we just really want to emphasize that it was a life-changing experience for both of us and our fellow fellows. Um, and we appreciate the knowledge from the world-class scholars, archaeologists um, that traveled up with us on the trips and uh, just took away so much rich culture and heritage and history from our religion and our community. So. That's the application page, and there's a website. There's a, I'm sure there's a Facebook page too. I'm sure there is. Um, but we're pretty much gonna sum it up there. But we just want to encourage you guys. Like, if you guys have any questions, even after this, I know some people are asking me questions. Like, oh, tell me more about this, and tell me more about that. I'm like, okay, just hang on one second. I'll tell you this uh, venue here. But if somebody missed it and they want to know more, approach us. Dan and I, we won't bite. I, but I don't know. <laughs> we 
We won't bite. Uh, there's a couple of guys in the, in the audience there that will be happy to even talk to you about it. And um, yeah, feel free to approach us and if you have any questions, we'll be happy to answer them for you as best as we can. Those will be researching as well. Great, thanks very much. Right, guys, moving on to our next set of speakers who represent uh, the very famous Zen in Mumbai, the Zoroastrian Youth of the Next Generation yeah. organization. I'm sure you guys have heard of that from the last Congress. It was absolute mayhem. Uh, the two key speakers, uh, we got Malcolm Desai and Rashna Lentin. Uh, starting off with Malcolm, who is a very uh, recognized, uh, well recognized lawyer with J. Sagar Associates, uh, one of India's leading law firms. Uh, his practice covers diverse aspects of commercial and civil, uh, civil legislations uh, with specific focus on matters relating to the energy, telecom and infrastructure sectors. Malcolm has been one of the managing committee members of the youth group uh, Zing uh, and is actively associated with its various events. Uh, at the Six Worlds Ration Youth Congress, Malcolm uh, promises uh, to talk about uh, different facets of Zing and how they've actually grown up to be a very successful brand. Something we discovered in the morning session about the cool factor uh, as well. So uh, on that note, of course, followed by Rashna, uh, who's an events and media professional who works, uh, uh, revolves, uh, she pretty much revolves around English and Parsi theater, uh, public relations, entertainment, and of course, when you're in India, you're at the pinnacle of it all. So ladies and gentlemen, without any further ado, Malcolm Desai and Rashna Lenti. Yeah. Okay, so uh, I believe most of you guys know what Zing is, and uh, all those who don't know what Zing is, could you please keep your hands up? Okay, quite a few, clearly. Okay, Zing is uh, the Zoroastrian Youth for the Next Generation, which is the youth group of the Bombay Parsi Panchayat. And as you can see, we are one of the m most, I would say, active youth groups in Bombay. We were started in 2009 and we have completed six years. Sorry, uh, I'm sorry, I'm so sorry. Okay, uh, did you change it? Okay, um, we were started in 2009. We've completed six years of uh, serving the community, connecting the youth, giving them a platform to present themselves in all spheres be it sports, be it advertising, or be it in uh, modeling. We, as on date, have a, over 5,000 registered members in the past six years, and it's growing day by day. As on date, you can visit us on Facebook, we have 3,000 plus members over there. Our main work revolves around getting the youth together, conducting social service exercises such as food collection drives to serve the needy people of the community, uh, conducting speed dating. So for all those people who are actually into getting hitched, so that's a different platform for you to actually meet up with people and get together. And uh, also conducting youth meets in India, such as this one, which we've done on two occasions in the past few years. Russia? we do. Um, so just let me give you a little introduction. So um, as he said, Zing was started in 2009. So I joined Zing a little later uh, after the launch, probably three or four months later. I joined in as a volunteer and then in 2012 I became a part of the main committee and that's how uh, five years have just flown by. And so now let me just share with you the kind of work we do. So uh, being a youth body, but it is not just about the youth. We also want to uh, contribute, uh, we want to take care of our elderly, um, so we do a lot of social service, uh, we, do, uh, we visit them uh, at these uh, Parsi boards, um, we um, uh, just talk to them, be with them, um, spend time with them, sing songs with them, 
Basically, they just like people being around, you understand, coming to them, talking to them. Okay, uh, so I'm sorry. So basically, uh, as Zin, it's not only about the youth. It's what the youth can give back to the society. It's what the youth can give back to our uh, forefathers as well. And these people have been left in certain old age homes or widowed uh, houses, and they actually have no one. So Zin has taken up the initiative to at least go to them uh, a few months in a year and spend time with them, make them feel at home, Make them comfortable. So this is, this is a little uh, thing that we did at the Parik Dhanushala. Uh, now this is one of our social service events. We do at least like about two per year. We do it at different bars. So uh, this is like a food grade collection drive. So we go to door to door. Um, we always intimate the bar prior to our going there. So we go door to door collecting basic food grains, uh, essential items. There are people that give medicines. And of course, whatever we collect, we segregate them and then we distribute it to the needy. So there are orphanages, there are widow's stalls, and we also make trips to uh, Udvada, Navsari, in remote areas, Gorki. There are like a lot of uh, people who Parsi is there, so we distribute all the stuff there. And that's our task force. We have a lot of volunteers that help us, so that's, the, that's how we execute everything. Now, um, um, spending time with the elderly is one. We also um, want to give some, something to the children. So we have uh, the children of the Ababai Parent School. So this is one evening that we spent with them. So they were just overjoyed. So that was an Antakshri that we did with them and giving them some goodies and things like that. So that was one of our uh, events. This is again a drive that we did in Andheri, one of the suburbs of Bombay, five colonies that we covered in one day. Again, our task force. Now, this is a trip that we made uh, at Kurbada <laughs> and Nasari. And this so basically, all these food grains, essential items that are collected for the needy are one, distributed to those uh, in need in Bombay. And thereafter, immediately on the next day or the coming weekend or so, our task force and committee members visit Navsari Udvada. And as you may have visited Navs Udvada and places, there are quite a few people who are in need of help. And this is our way of giving them basic essential supplies, medicine, help, uh, and do our part of it. Although we are stationed in Bombay, but we do try and branch out, branch out as much as we can. Kushubak, the South Bombay colony. Now this is again another senior citizen event that we did, a dance therapy workshop. <laughs> they had a ball. Uh, these dance therapy workshops are not conducted by us uh, in our individual capacities, but it's also giving a platform to various Zoroastrian entrepreneurs and experts where they get a platform to showcase their talent. So you have Zumba workshops being conducted by young Zoroastrians. You have dance therapy, so uh, can you go to the next slide, please? You have uh, Dilshad over there, who is a professional dance therapist, also goes abroad and teaches others. So these kind of uh, events give our Zoroastrians a platform, as well as benefit the youth and the old. Now, this is a very special event that we did, a, uh, a new initiative that we just recently did. We did two of these. We did one at Rustambagh and one at Kushnubagh. So basically we have a lot of uh, differently abled children in our community, um, young adults. So um, we had an like uh, entertainment evening for them, uh, a fancy dress competition, uh, painting competition. So we had the theme as Mother's Day and they just had to paint, draw, whatever they felt like. And then we had horse cards for them. So basically just a fun evening for them. So get, get, getting them together, we had children from the Own Creations Trust, one of the NGOs in Bombay. Um, so that was our initiative. These are the children from the Own Creations Trust. So basically when we see the smile on their faces, it just gives us immense joy. Now this is our uh, green initiative that we do in Bombay. This is the recycle Karo drive that we did. 
um, in one of the colonies. So we collect uh, right from newspapers to scrap items to all of that, and then all that gets recycled. Yeah, uh, as I said in the morning, uh, this Recycle Cover Drive was an initiative taken by us and conducted in two or three uh, colonies in Bombay. And anything from people's old televisions, uh, washing machines, etc., everything was donated. All that goes to this particular company called Recycle Caro, which recycles these goods, gives us the fair market value for it. And all those, uh, and that money had moved into purchasing food grains for our food donation drives. Now this is an, another initiative for the senior citizens, another entertainment evening for them. So there was housing, there was singing and games and a lot of stuff. Uh, now this is the Hambandagi that we did, um, a religious uh, get together of people and that was broadcasted in the New Year on our website. This was our Navroz get together. This is uh, way back in 2011. So we all got together. There was some Ramna Gyari Nada. This is the Navroz day. Everyone looks forward to this bash every March. This is our eagerly awaited annual event. <coughs> So uh, now getting to the, what Zing does for the youth, uh, as we said, a lot of uh, fun events, as Ben said in the morning, uh, social. social fun events, and yes, there are a lot of people that do attend these uh, events, Ben I think would second me on that, yeah. and uh, so yeah, everything from karaoke, karaoke to adventure sports, and participation at every paintball event. Okay, uh, so something what you what we guys did yesterday as the amazing race. So we had the treasure hunt. We had the treasure hunt uh, in Bombay. In fact, across Bombay, and uh, we had a massive turnout as you can see in the next few slides. That's the group. This is the Alexander School. And this is the, uh, this is the treasure hunt that was combined with the rain dance. Now this is another uh, uh, adventure activity that we do, the white water rafting. Um, it is somewhere close to Goa that we had done this one. That's the monsoon trick. Very exciting. Uh, one of the uh, uh, hill stations close by Bombay that we took the youngsters there. If you're wondering, that, that's me. <laughs> well, I actually had a fall, but it was a fun one. <laughs> and this was the Ethel World and the Water Kingdom trip. We also took the kids there and the parents. Okay, so this was one uh, sad moment for us and we had to show some solidarity for our fallen corporates. Uh, we had uh, the death of two Parsi young boys on motorcycles and to show solidarity and safety, we called out a small bike rally uh, in Bombay uh, just a few months back. Yeah, that's a little direct. platforms for our young Zoroastrians who have uh, made a name in uh, Limelight and uh, so this is Mirza Patel who is one of uh, Bombay's very famous directors when it comes to Parsi plays and gigs who has been uh, giving workshops to our young budding uh, actors. And he has his own theatre company known as City Point Productions. 
and that is one of our image management workshops. So we have got Vinaysha Kharaj, who is one of the youngest grooming experts, youngest Zoroastrian grooming experts. That's Vinaysha there, left corner. So we had a session for the guys and a separate one for the girls as well. Now this is a makeup and sari workshop. Another grooming one by Ashish Kaveri. Now this is a competition, a national level competition that we did. Um, this was a national level competition that we conducted uh, on the lines of X Factor stuff. And uh, this, we had basically conducted auditions across India, got down participants to Bombay to perform over a day. And uh, we had celebrity uh, judges, not only Parsis and Iranis, but also people from the Hollywood, uh, Bollywood industry. And it was a major success. calendar and this is our uh, annual event where we launch the Zinc calendar every year. I hope Rashna's carrying a calendar, I don't know. questions. Um, I've had a few questions uh, in the past few days and I hope I've answered them. Yeah? How do I buy the calendar? <laughs> uh, you can either order it, you can uh, visit us on Facebook and if she has one then maybe. <laughs> I think there are a few guys in this calendar. Are there? No, not this one. There are three. Sorry guys, we've opened up the floor to questions. How <laughs> often uh, do we, we at least do what, say one or two events per month? And then we uh, publish it on Facebook that it's going to happen and we send out uh, messages to our uh, members and that's how they know about it. Right guys, that was uh, Malcolm Desai and um, Miss Lenton. <laughs> <laughs> 